Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. Today we're going to be looking at Galatians chapter 5 and verses 16 to 25. My counsel is this, live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with the free spirit, just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are contrary to each other, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket guards, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cut-throat competition, all-consuming yet never satisfied, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. I could go on and on. This isn't the first time I've warned you, you know. If you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about living, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindless responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good, is crucified. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. And that means we will not compare ourselves with each other, as if one of us were better and the other worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives Each of us is an original. There is within each of us a good side. And we know that as our innermost and basic tendency toward good, toward God. It is within each of us this this voice of God that counsels and encourages us toward our most authentic responses and decisions. But we can also identify within ourselves a dark side within our souls. And this is perceived as the conflictual drive toward fragmentation and destruction. We are not in this conflict alone. Christ is active within us within the power of his Spirit. It is precisely within this struggle that the Spirit empowers us to wholeness. We can be encouraged by keeping in mind always that the force of good within us always outweighs the force of darkness.
In his letter to the Galatians, Paul names these two forces within as spirit and flesh. By spirit he means the cooperation of our deepest selves with the spirit of God. In referring to flesh, Paul does not imply any negative connotation regarding the body, but rather uses it as a symbol of all within us which opposes goodness. The challenge is to be guided by the Spirit, discerning the signs along the way. These signs are made evident within human experience of our daily lives. To the small Christian community in Galatia, Paul writes his reassurance. If you are guided by the Spirit, you will be in no danger of yielding to self-indulgence. The two lists of vices and virtues that Paul presents illustrates that there where clinging to things ends, God begins to be. Penetrated by the Spirit of God, our lives become faithful. Birth happens in the grace of letting go. The Spirit's own gift of patience awakens within us a sensitivity and a receptivity to the process of our own inner healing. In the letting go of useless shame and false guilt, a space for new possibility is born. By enabling us to embrace a gentle discipline, the spirit of freedom brings balance and harmony. The spirit encourages us to dare to expose our vulnerability and trust ourselves to loving and being loved by others. The fruit of the Spirit becomes evident in the gentle attentiveness to allowing others to be who they are. Above all, the Spirit rejoices in our laughter and enjoyment in a world filled with energy and beauty and the beauty of creation. Paul exemplified the practice of letting go. Patterned on the life of Jesus, Paul's life was one of total surrender to the Spirit within him. His life was completely given over to preaching the power of the Spirit and the transformation of Christ. He was never discouraged by the new Christians' lack of understanding, nor by their rigid adherence to formalities of law. Paul simply continued always to urge the Christians of Galatia to embrace for themselves the Christ who gave them ultimate meaning and joy. His words encapsulate his deep identification with and commitment to Christ, I have now not with my own life, but with the life of Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2 and verse 20. And just take a moment to reflect. How does fear erode your trust of others and of yourself? How does fear cause you to wear a mask that hides your true feelings? How does fear drive you to secure positions of status at any expense to self and others? And then, how does honesty free you to recognize your own limitations and to welcome constructive criticism from others? How does being receptive and open to mutually trusting and transparent relationships, how does that enrich your life? And how does openness release courage within you to dare to risk failure and rejection? And so, Father, we ask that you would help us to decide to follow your spirit into places of openness and wholeness. Amen.